In my video on Monopoly, I explained why a Monopoly faces a trade-off between higher prices and lower quantities. Starting at a price of P1, the Monopolist can sell Q1 units and get revenue equal to this box. Starting at a price of P2, Monopolist sells fewer units, but at a higher price. If the Monopolist wants to raise the price from P1 to P2, Monopolist presumably does so because it gets higher price, this revenue. But the Monopolist must give up the revenue from the units that are no longer going to be sold. So the Monopolist actually faces a trade-off between Area A and Area C. Fundamentally, this trade-off is higher prices, lower quantities. In this video, I want to explain why this Monopolist trade-off leads to monopolies trying to do something called price discriminating. In other words, selling the same product at different prices. For example, if the monopolist could just sell these units that would have gone unsold at a price of P1, but all the other units at a price of P2, no trade-off needed because the monopolist is able to sell at P1 for those special consumers who uh, are going to be more responsive to the price increase. So if the price increase would drive them away, the monopolist gives them a discount. And there are three conditions that the monopoly must satisfy to actually be able to charge different prices for the same good. First, have market power. If the firm faces a competitor and tries to charge different prices for the same good, the competitor will just go to those, that group of people who has the higher price and just undercut them, making it not profitable to set different prices for the same good. Number two, the firm must be able to prevent resale. This goes back to the first condition that we need to satisfy. The firm needs to be a monopoly, needs to have some market power. Now, if there was ability for the consumers to just buy the good and then sell it to some other consumers, they would no longer have market power. So in a very, sim in a very important sense, these two conditions really capture lack of competition. You need to be able to prevent resale for the product. For example, if you go to the movie theater, it's, uh, it's prohibited to use a student ticket if you're not a student. Typically, they'll charge you at the gate, require you to show an ID, and then you get your ticket and you go directly in. Uh, you can't buy 10,000 tickets with one student ID. That's, uh, that's the, the uh, theater's way of preventing resale of student tickets, which get a discount on the regular price. Now the third one is equally important. The monopoly must be able to identify consumers of different types. In particular, the Monopoly must be able to identify a student from a non-student at the movie theater to even be able to start to sell the, the products at different prices. The Monopoly will have to have some way to distinguish the individuals based on what types of consumers they are. Now, given this really broad overview of what price discrimination is and what must be satisfied for price discrimination to take place, you would think that a monopolist, because they, wouldn't, they would no longer face this monopolist trade-off, you'd think a monopolist would love to price discriminate. Now, the first type of price discrimination is called first-degree price discrimination. This is also called perfect price discrimination. Now, what happens in first-degree price discrimination is that we look at this demand curve as a willingness to pay curve. So, for the first unit, the willingness to pay is high, for the second unit, the willingness to pay is a little bit lower, so on and so forth, down the demand schedule. Now, the monopolist sees this downward sloping demand schedule and says it would be really nice to charge that first person who's willingness to pay, and the second person willingness to pay, the third person their willingness to pay, all the way down until it's no longer worth selling the good to that person. And that's precisely what first degree price discrimination accomplishes. It is perfect price discrimination. It's sort of the ideal price discrimination out there that the monopolist would love to get away with because it allows the monopolist to extract all of the consumer surplus by charging just the consumer's reservation price to be in the market. So the monopolist would charge this price to this consumer, this price to this consumer, so on and so forth, all the way down to the point where cost equals the, the uh, 
marginal willingness to pay, which is represented by the height of the demand curve. Now, in the real world, it's really hard to actually get away with first degree price discrimination because these consumers are not going to be willing to reveal this information to the supplier that they're willing to pay a high amount. And so we don't typically see first degree price discrimination. But imagine uh, one particular way of trying to get away with first de degree price discrimination. Suppose that this is an individual's demand curve and that everyone has the same individual demand curve and that this is a marginal cost. If the monopolist is able to charge two prices, say an entry fee to sort of buy the product, and then the per unit uh, price, this is what's called a two-part tariff or two-part pricing, then the monopolist might be able to recover this entire consumer surplus. In particular, if the monopolist sells at the margin at a price of C, but then charges an entry fee equal to consumer surplus, or what consumer surplus would have been at that price of C, then the monopolist is able to effectively achieve first degree price discrimination, but in sort of a sneaky way. Another name for this is called Disneyland pricing, because you tend to see this type of pricing for sort of Disneyland. They charge you to get into the, uh, into the place, and then they'll charge you for sort of photographs with the with the characters, they'll charge you for cotton candy, and so on and so forth at marginal cost once you're in there. So this is an important type of price discrimination, even though it, in some sense it is perfect, unattainable, um, but in another sense it's what the monopolies try to, try to achieve with their price discrimination technique.